Today we're going to prove a nice integral identity. And I'm proving this in a standalone video, but it's kind of likely that it'll be applied in a video coming up in the future. So let's see our final goal for this video. That is the integral from zero to infinity of dx over x to the fourth plus ax squared plus b squared. We want to show that that's equal to pi over two times b times the square root of a plus two b. So since this is a quartic in the denominator, this is actually pretty tricky. I guess you could factor this as two irreducible quadratics, but I think that's more work than it's really worth. And so we're going to use the following lemma to simplify things a little bit. And this lemma itself is kind of general. It says that if f is continuous and the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x exists, then the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f evaluated at x minus b over x is the same as the original integral. And that's for b bigger than or equal to zero. I'd like to point out that b equals zero just gives us the whole integral as is. So when we're working through our proof, we may as well assume that b is strictly bigger than zero. Again, because the equal zero is really nothing. Okay, so our first step will be to break this into two pieces. And that's because something slightly different is happening for the negative values of x versus the positive values of x. So we'll write this as the integral from minus infinity to zero of, well, this function, f of x minus b over x dx, and then plus the integral from zero up to infinity, well, of the same function, of course. Okay, great. And now we're going to apply a change of variables to both of them. And let's color code this change of variable. So I'm going to underline this um, first integral in green and this second integral over here in blue. And then over here to the left, I'll make a green box where we do all of our calculations for the change of variables of the green underlined integral. And over here, I'll make a blue box and that's, of course, for the blue underlined integral. Okay, so for this green underlined substitution, I'm going to take x and set it equal to negative square root of b times e to the minus t. So that means that negative b over x is equal to, well, let's see, the minus signs cancel. And then we're left with b over the square root of b, but b over the square root of b is simply the square root of b. So that's going to give us a square root of b. And then we'll have 1 over e to the minus t, so that's going to be e to the t. Okay, so that's what we get for negative b over x. And then also, we probably need to calculate dx. So dx, in this case, will be the square root of b times e to the minus t. Notice the minus signs cancel. Oh, and I guess we need a dt here. Okay, good. So now let's maybe write this first substitution. So notice we're going to get a square root of b out in front of the whole thing. And then we'll have the integral. We'll talk about the bounds of integration in just a second. But we'll have f evaluated at the square root of b times e to the t minus e to the minus t. And then we'll have an e to the minus t here dt. Okay, great. So notice this in here is our x minus b over x. And then this along with this is our dx. Okay, so now what about the bounds of integration? Well, let's see, when x is quote unquote equal to zero, well, that's only able to occur when we've got something like negative infinity inside of the exponent here. Of course, we're keeping it loose. But in order to have negative infinity inside of the exponent, we need to have infinity for the value of t. And then what about for negative infinity? Well, if x is equal to negative infinity, well, I think it's pretty clear that t itself is equal to negative infinity. So it gives you that integral or that bound of integration right there. And so now let's see what we need to do for the blue underlined integral. So in this case, we'll take x and set it equal to the square root of b times e to the t. So it's a little bit simpler. 
but that means that minus b over x, in this case, is minus square root of b times e to the minus t. And then dx is simply equal to the square root of b times e to the t dt. So that's what we get there. Okay, and then let's rewrite this a little bit. So we'll have the square root of b, and then our bounds of integration will actually be minus infinity to infinity for a kind of a parallel reason to these over here. And then we'll have f evaluated at the square root of b times e to the t minus e to the minus t, and then we have an e to the t dt outside. So we're left with something that looks a little bit like that. Okay, well now let's smash these together and see if we get something nice. So we've got the integral from minus infinity to infinity now, and then we'll have the square root of b times e to the t plus e to the minus t. So that's combining everything outside of the function. And then we'll have f evaluated at the square root of b times e to the t minus e to the minus t dt. Okay, good. And now we can do one last change of variables. So I'm gonna take this term right here, the argument of our function, and I'll set that back equal to x. But then it's pretty clear that if we take the derivative of that with respect to t, we'll get exactly this term out here that's floating outside of the function. So this right here is our dx term. And then you can check that the bounds of integration don't change either. So that's gonna end up giving us the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx, which is exactly what we needed for this lemma over here. Okay, so now let's focus on our main result. So we've got this quartic in the denominator, but we'd like to turn it into a quadratic in the denominator. And we can do that by factoring an x squared out of the denominator. So let's see, that'll leave us with the integral from zero to infinity and then we'll have one over x squared plus a, because if we factor an x squared out of each of those, that's what we get, and then plus b over x squared, and then I'm gonna write this as dx over x squared. So that's like our little extra term right there. Okay, nice. And now the next thing that we'd like to do is to perhaps complete the square on this thing that's in the denominator. So let's do that. So let's take this over here and we'll think about how we can complete the square on that. And in order to aid us complete the square right here, let's make the following kind of observational calculation. And that is that if we take x minus b over x quantity squared, we will get x squared minus two times b. Notice the cross terms, the x part will cancel. That's like kind of the important trick here. And then plus b squared over x squared. And now you may ask, well, why did we do minus b over x instead of plus b over x? We would have still achieved the same x squared and this b over x squared term. Well, that's because we'd like to get something that looks like this within our integral. And this is the way to do it. Okay, but now using this observation, we can see that the following denominator, which I'll just bring down here, x squared plus a, plus b over x squared is in fact equal to x minus b over x quantity squared, and then plus a plus 2b. I think that's pretty clear because if you multiply this out, the two b's will cancel. And then, well, what have we done? Well, we've completed the square, kind of condensing our variable into one object there. Okay, so now let's rewrite this. So this is gonna be now the integral from zero to infinity of, well, we have one over, and then we'll have x minus b over x quantity squared, and then plus a plus two b, and then we still have this dx over x squared out here. But one issue that we have is that, well, this thing right here looks an awful lot like what we have inside of our function, but we've got this x squared outside in the denominator right here. And so you might think about the type of substitution we can do that will essentially leave this unchanged 
while getting rid of this. And this substitution that we're about to do will make it happen. So let's maybe put that down here in this blue box. So let's maybe set t equal to b over x. Notice that's equivalent to saying that x is equal to b over t, which is also kind of the same thing as saying, let's see, uh, dt is equal to negative b over x squared dx. Okay, so that means that this thing right here, this dx over x squared, is in fact equal to negative 1 over b dt. Okay, so I think that's pretty good for now. Now let's rewrite this. So that's gonna be equal to the integral of, I'll take care of the bounds of integration in a little bit. We'll just talk about the function for the time being. So we have one over, we need to replace x with b over t. So we have b over t minus, now we'll replace b over x with t. So it's b over t minus t quantity squared and then plus a plus two b. And kind of the whole point of this substitution was to simplify that stuff in the blue circle. And we can replace all of this with minus one over b dt. So I'll take the minus one over b here and then put the dt over here. Now let's look at the bounds of integration. So as x approaches zero from above, notice that t will be approaching infinity, positive infinity. So that means our lower bound of integration will be positive infinity. And then as x approaches infinity, t will be approaching zero. So it kind of swaps the bounds of integration. But that's a little bit awkward. We can fix it by taking this minus sign and then re-swapping the bounds of integration. I'm gonna do that while simultaneously changing the order of subtraction here, which doesn't change anything given that we have that squared. Okay. So anyway, now we have one over b, the integral from zero to infinity of one over, we have t minus b over t, quantity squared plus a plus two b dt. But now we can use our lemma because we're set up for that perfectly. So let's put this equal sign right here and let's just point out that this equal sign is by our lemma that we started this video off proving. So that's gonna allow us to write this as one over b, and then the integral from zero to infinity. I guess we went from minus infinity to infinity here, but I'll actually let you think about why we can do this from zero to infinity instead of minus infinity to infinity. Hint, it has to do with the fact that we're working with even functions here. Okay, but anyway, here we'll get one over t squared plus a plus 2b. But I'm actually going to write that a plus 2b in kind of a fancy way, and that is a plus 2b. I'm going to take the square root of it, and then I'll square it. But now we're in fact left with a standard integral, and I think this is an integral that we've come up with several times on the channel, so I won't even worry about evaluating it. You could do a change of variables if you wanted to to get there, but there's really not much to it. So this will essentially just give us our result, which let's recall that that was pi over two times b times the square root of a plus two b. And there we have it. So we started over here at our goal integral and we ended at the value we wanted to show. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.